But for more on this, Jeremy Kenendik is president at Refugees International. He's also a former official in two previous U.S. administrations working on overseas aid. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for being with us here on Al Jazeera. Uh, first of all, what do you make of this, of Israel uh, temporarily opening the uh, border crossing and allowing up to 350 extra trucks to go through. Do you think it's going to be anywhere near enough at this point in time for what is needed, especially in the north of Gaza? Well, it, it's, it's a step in a positive direction, but it's certainly still far short of what needs to happen. I think it's really striking that after months of denying that they were obstructing aid, um, that when President Biden really laid down the line with Prime Minister Netanyahu, suddenly they found a bunch of new ways to unblock aid. Um, but it's not enough. And as the last presenter said, without a ceasefire, a, it will not be possible for aid groups to put together the kind of anti-famine operation that Gaza now requires. Um, you can't do that solely off the backs of trucks. You need the space to operate safely, to run malnutrition treatment centers, to restore the health system, to rebuild water systems, uh, and of course to distribute food at, at, at large scale. None of that is possible as long as the war is continuing. Mm. As we mentioned when we were introducing you that you've worked in uh, two previous US administrations, specifically working on overseas aid. Can you just give us a little bit of an insight into what you think might have happened behind the scenes uh, that pushed Biden finally to put more pressure on Netanyahu to allow more aid into Gaza? Well, I, for, for months, of course, even from the earliest days of this war, President Biden has been calling on the Israeli government to adhere to international humanitarian law, to protect civilians, to protect aid workers. And there has been you know, negligibly little progress on that for six months. And I think a few recent events have brought this to a head and, and to a point where even President Biden, who has been very, very reluctant to put pressure on the Israeli government, uh, could not could not choose any other course but to take a harder line. And mm. obviously, the World Central Kitchen strike is a huge part of that. It shows how broken uh, the Israeli system for what's called deconfliction, the, the the process for protecting humanitarians from military strikes, shows how broken that process has been. Shows how. Uh, flawed the rules of engagement are by the Israeli military if they could so easily strike such an obvious humanitarian convoy. But in addition to all that, of course, there is a famine getting underway mm. in Gaza. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, there's no way to really adequately fight that as long as this war continues. Yeah, and, and that's why so many people have been calling for a ceasefire. Just on President Biden, I mean, he would be fully briefed uh, about the situation on the ground, like the realities of what is happening day in, day out within Gaza. So what do you think, why do you think it took him until now, until this strike on the World uh, Central Kitchen aid workers, for him to have finally put pressure on Netanyahu? Well, I, I think this was something that just could not be dismissed or ignored. Um, you know, as, as you as you said earlier in the report, and as his own statement said after the World Central Kitchen strike, this is not the first time this has happened. There have been strikes on humanitarian operations throughout this war. There have been more than 170 staff of the uh, of uh, the UN, um, principally UNRWA, who have been killed over the course of this war, but also deaths of staff from Save the Children. Uh, from ANERA, from uh, Doctors Without Borders. Uh, there was an International Rescue Committee guest house that was hit, or rest staff residence that was hit. So, you know, this has been a routine thing. This is, this is a, a, an extreme example of a pattern that has been mm. going on throughout. And that's why aid groups have been pushing the president for months now to take a harder line with the Israeli government on that. I think that the World Central Kitchen strike kind of just made that, it, it, it was such a gratuitous example that he could no longer uh, he could no longer maintain the support that he's been holding for mm. the Netanyahu government. OK, thanks so much. We really do appreciate your time and your insight. Uh, Jeremy Kanindek, thank you very much.